Hey, it's Joe Glines, and I wanted to set the stage here a little before I start walking through the script. So when I used to work at Corporate America, um, a part of it, I was on the email team and I was the targeting, you know, go-to person. And basically, we sent out over a million emails a month and our email click-through rate and open rates were really low. And so um, I started really working on how to better target. And uh, basically, you know, every campaign that would go out, people would put in, this is kind of who they want to target. Um, and then I would go in and find ways to actually find those people. And so in that process, I'd be using a PL SQL to connect to our database and looking at all the tracking from mostly our web traffic, but you know, from other sources as well, of what people have done, what our customers and pros prospects have done on our website, and then saying, hey, you know, this person was interested in this thing, so we're going to target them. The, the problem was, uh, our servers, you know, we're dealing with millions, often millions and millions and, you know, tens of millions of rows of data. And so I go to do a query to say, well, let me see how many people are interested in this. And it could take, it could take three minutes, five minutes to return, you know, sometimes it's a lot shorter, right? But it depends it, to come back. And so each campaign I would do targeting on, I could spend 30 minutes just really wasting my time waiting for that query to come back to give me an idea of, did I pick the right thing or not? And then it dawned on me, um, I wonder if I could create, like every week, go in and create um, some aggregate files of those uh, tables and on the on the different levels of targeting to say, here's how many, not the who, right? Here's how many people, you know, were interested in this. And if I load those into a local file and I could search across them and then make an easy way to actually search across them, especially with a fuzzy search, because I don't, I don't actually know what I'm searching for at the time. When we were doing this, originally, we didn't have the actual product IDs, the, the numeric values and a key for it. We had the string fuzzy matching, and it was ridiculous. And then our clients would give us stuff, and it never matched. So so anyway, so I created, here's an example where I created these files. And in, in, um, let's go ahead now and take a look at, oops, let's take a look at the files. There we go. So the, here, are, here are the files I had from who knows when, uh, back in 2016, uh, at least, right? Probably before that. Um, yeah, that's a that's a bad one. Let's go to one that's, here we go. So this is on our, our breakouts and geographies and, you know, like how many people we could actually email in those. So, so these are the flat files. I'm showing them in Excel just because it's easier to read. Uh, let's look at the product one. So, so these are the things I would use um, and I'd want to query them. And somewhere in here, usually there's, like a count to give me some idea of how many people, but not always, but here's the, the hierarchy count, right? Um, now what I did was, uh, and Mace Wraith helped me with this. This is, like I said, it's a long time ago. Um, this is this script. I'm not gonna actually get into uh, the coding of the script because I'm just gonna give it to you and, uh, and you can take a look, but we leverage uh, his at the time xml class it's been this is years ago so it's been updated but this local version still i launched it earlier still runs um, and we're building a gui and doing the search so let's go ahead and launch it now it comes up it it programmatically looks into that folder which i've hard set if i remember correctly for i think it's just comma separated values you know csv files and tab separated values i call them tsvs there's no standard for it but um, i call them tsvs and so these are the drop downs of the files like can i do this there we go uh in this folder right so it's automatically coming in here getting them and you can see how it mimics it looks like it's even in the same order awesome so those are those files and i can easily choose between them let's say if i want to do the application now, now notice how fast that loads, right? It it loads them incredibly fast, but who would want to search through this, right? So up here, I can search for, let's say I wanted to do audio um, doc, and notice how it's filtering for me. So it's a, it's a you know, fuzzy search. Every time I type a letter, I shouldn't say fuzzy because it is looking for exact, but it is filtering it on what's returned. And in this, I can actually even say, what, what column do I want to search? So for each table, each one of these, I should uh, consider them a table. Each one of these tables or file, I can first tell it what column to search because I could easily, let's say, import a new table and the structure's not the same. This allows me to point to a different column to say, oh, search that column, right? So it tells me which one do I want to search, which one to return. I'll explain this in a second. And then basically the format you want to stick it in. Um, so here, let's say I, I wanted to add this one. I got several ways to do this. I can, I think, double click. Now notice this 390 down here. That's because the return column is application specific. 
or, or yeah, I, I don't know what that stood for, but see that 390 there. And then if I add the next one, it'll be 1040. So it's, at, this is just showing me what I've, what I've clicked on, right? So I could add, and actually if I, what's cool is if, if I go back and try to do one I've already done, it'll say, Hey dummy, that's already in the list. Okay, great. So this would allow me to very quickly add these and then I can hit the copy to clipboard. And now this is in, and I've, of course, this is structured in a way, this is for my in-list query, right? So this is exactly what I would put into my query to get people who'd done that. And that's where I take it back and, and actually have my query built to run against the server to get the individual accounts. So again, it's it's uh, it's just this, I can't explain how much time this saved me uh, in running queries and being able to come in here. And, and again, I can say, you know, I want to return. Yeah, actually that's the column I want. I could, um, I can come in, I could click a bunch of them and I think just maybe hit enter. Oh, that didn't seem to like it. Um, let's try that again. Oh, add selected values. There we go. So that would, dump, and now see that's returning this column, which in reality, it's this column. So, um, I would want, that's interesting. So, oh no, that, that is one. Okay. I need to change it to ID. I saw that one. They just looked very similar. So now when I redo what I just did, it adds the numbers, right? And that's because you, you generally speaking, you don't want to search on a, on a you know, string values, searching on the numbers. If it's available is far superior. Um, so yeah, so, so again, this was an easy way for me to, to, Autom uh, not automate, but speed up everything I'm doing. I, I mean, this was my main job. So I, I just ended up saving so much time and actually doing better targeting because then I had more time to spend on really the targeting, not waiting for the stupid query to return with how many contacts I might pull in. Did I get the right one? Um, and the really beautiful thing is, you know, I can share this um, with the people actually putting in the targeting, right? So they could use it's it's simple enough, and and you know, I had to give some explanations to it, but I could say use this tool when you're trying to target. You figure out who you want to target instead of me. They were the experts. Um, I often just had a, a very general idea of who they were trying to target because our list for selection wasn't great. But just think about this in your case. Are you are you waiting for your queries to return all the time? Could you create like an aggregate table? Um, and and I even have I think where did I see that? I saw that somewhere um, in in here the SQL. So I saved the SQL queries to that were, would generate those tables for me. And then, like I said, every week I could go in, update the numbers, and then just load them into these uh, files, right? These are just files, and look how small they are, right? This is the thing, this is why it's so lightning fast, is when you aggregate things, you basically have, even for a million rows of data, you'll have, um, depending on how it's sliced, you know, you'll have probably a couple hundred rows because you've said, give me, you know, the total count, not individual count of people who have this thing. So it's, a, it's just a great example of how you can use something like auto hotkey. In this case, I'm using auto hotkey, but to rethink what you're doing and apply it, you know, locally and just really save an, an amazing amount of time. Cheers.